So on the 5th of August 2018, I made the life-changing move from Nottingham to London. I'd secured a job at Hammersmith Hospital and I was due to start the very next day. The thing that was most remarkable is that when I moved down, I only took one suitcase worth of things with me and I never looked back at all the things that I left behind. Fast forward three years, I've moved back to Nottingham and instead of coming back with just one suitcase, I came back with a car full of things. When I was packing my stuff, I was looking down and I realised that none of it really reflected the time that I'd spent in London. It was just things. It was just stuff. It was at that point I realised that I treasured the experiences that I had and the friends that I made and the places that I went more than the things that I'd gathered along the way. This realisation was further cemented when I moved home and seen that all the things that I left three years ago were still here waiting for me. No, I'd not missed any of it. None of it had made any difference to my life whether I had it or not. So why have I kept it all these years? I think part of the problem is that I hold sentimental value to things. I don't want to throw them away because it means something and if I throw it away then that's a part of my life that I'm missing out on or that I won't remember. So this folder represents three years worth of uni work. It's got all my assignments and my dissertations and I'm not throwing it away because it represents three years worth of hard work and sleepless nights to get my degree. Now you'd think that by graduating, getting my degree and being in my nursing career that would be proof enough. So why do I need to keep it? Another example is these Pokemon games. Now these are a visual representation of the hours that I put in to collect every single Pokemon in each game and that's the reason I don't want to get rid of them. But they're just sat on a shelf doing nothing. Aren't the memories enough? Why do I have to have a physical copy of it? Now I think another part of the problem of why we collect so many things is that companies are good at selling to us. We see advertisements every day, all day, wherever you look, without even realising it. Scrolling on your phone, on the TV, going to the shop, looking at billboards. Advertisements are consuming our life. So these adverts are designed to get us to spend more money, buying things that we think we need, and this is how we get into the snowball effect of us collecting more and more and more things. Nowadays, we're in the era of upgrades. Think 10 years ago, how often would you upgrade your phone? Once every two years, say? But now Apple are bringing out a new phone twice a year, Samsung's doing the same because they've got something a little bit smaller, a little bit better, a little bit quicker. And in society nowadays, we think that we need the most newest thing, the most relevant things in order to fit in. So we buy more. This is Matt Diavella. He's a YouTuber that lives a minimalistic lifestyle. After binge watching his YouTube video, the idea of becoming a minimalist has become more and more appealing. You should check him out. So firstly, what is minimalism? A good definition written by Anthony Ongaro on what is minimalism. Anthony says, minimalism is all about owning only what adds value and meaning to your life and removing the rest. It's about removing the clutter and using your time and energy for the things that remain. We only have a certain amount of energy, time and space in our lives. In order to make the most of it, we must be intentional about how we are living each day. By owning less things and only owning things that add value to your life, is it one of the benefits of minimalism. As my friend Kevin says, So me think, why waste time? Say lot word when few word do trick. And the same thing applies. Why do we need a lot of things when a few things will do the trick? This concept of minimalism has really got me intrigued. I'm in a stage of my life where I'm making a change, I'm decluttering, so why not give it a go? So what are my motivations? One, financial. By spending less, I should keep more money in my pocket to buy things that actually add value to my life. Two, decluttering. I find that the more things you own, the easier it is to be untidy. Looking around my room at the minute, it is a mess. And same thing with like clothes. Because I've got a wardrobe full of clothes, I'll just take this one off, chuck it in the basket, get a new one. Put it in the basket, get a new one. And you find that your clothes pile and pile and pile up until you've got none left. Same with cups. You use one, put it in the sink, get a fresh one. Use one, get a fresh one. And it's this cycle because you own more, you use more and more mess accumulates easier. So number three, novelty versus nostalgia. This aspect is the fact that you buy something and you get all giddy and you use it every day for like a week and then the novelty wears off and then you put it in the corner and you never use it again. Versus nostalgia, so this aspect is all the experiences, I look back at my time in London on the holidays that I've been on, the friends that I've met and I value that more than the things that I own that I get giddy of for a week and then I put in the corner. And for time, I'm always saying, 
I've not got time to do that. Not got time to go to the gym. I've not got time to meal prep. Not got time to visit the family. And I'm hoping that this change in lifestyle will give me more freedom and give me more time. So over the next week, I think I'm gonna make a change in my lifestyle. I'm gonna become a minimalist.